Sure. Hello. Now you're here. Thank you. Yeah. Make sure the picture's clear. All right. Are you ready to hear from the Lord? Yeah. I hope you prayed before you came in. Lord, open my heart. Ready to receive your words. I'm going to pray right now. Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you for everything you've done for us. Lord, I'm here before you. Preach your word. Holy Spirit, and you're invited always to flow here. Touch every person here. Lord, let me decrease and you increase, Lord. Take control. We're all here because we serve you and we love you, Lord. We desire to grow and become more like you. Your precious son. Help us continue to be strong in everything. Help us to be like your son when we face different situations. Help us, Lord. We depend on you, Lord. As we come closer to you, come more like you. You come close to us as well. I thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Ready for the comics? Will you please stop telling the kids that ate us out of the house and home? Get it? The apple? Or the food? I was just messing with you in the last one. Chocolate pizza is still okay. The Ten Commandments. I love pizza and chocolate. They're leftovers. We already blessed them. <laughs> so you get away with that. If food is leftovers and they've been blessed, you don't have to bless them again. Are you ready for today's topic? The accuser. You know we have an accuser. You know what his name is? Satan. Mm -hmm. He likes to accuse us on everything. Recently, if you've been watching the news, have you heard a story about someone accusing someone? Have you heard about Judge Kavanaugh, he was accused. Yeah, he was. And it was a big deal in the news and people around here. If you have Facebook, you get different opinions, right? You have this side, you have this side. Mm -hmm. She says she had evidence. Yeah. Was it credible or was it not credible? That's what the, what the justice system had to figure out. We had evidence presented. Yeah. Satan will do that. He'll use people, hey, I have this evidence here. Or lies here. Some is true, some is not. But we have to figure it out. But we have to remember we're innocent, until proven guilty. That's the most important thing you have to remember. The same thing in this church. We're innocent until proven guilty. There has to be evidence to back it up. Satan will accuse you. Yes, some is true. And yeah, a lot is pretty much not true. Yeah. Yeah. God knows I made many mistakes in my life. You guys made many mistakes in your life, right? Yeah, we all remember in the same boat. We all make mistakes. We all sin. We all mess up. Say to be like, hey, they did that. They did that. They did that. Yeah. But Jesus done something for us. Let me show you a few verses about Satan. 
John chapter 8, verse 44. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding on to truth, for there's no true truth in him. When he lied, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. The Bible clearly tells you Satan is a liar. He is the accuser. He accuses each one of you of something. All right. The first is wrong here. Then I heard in a loud voice in heaven say, Now come the salvation, the power of the kingdom of God, and the authority of the Messiah, for the accuser of our brothers and sisters, who accuses them before our God, day and night has been hurled down. Quick check, where's the phone? The, the Bible first. This is not John 8, 44. This one is John 8, 44. Find this verse for me, please. I don't want to look it up right now. Grab my phone. Right. Now we know Satan uses people to accuse you. That's how he tries to put you down. He did the same to Christ. If you read the Bible about Christ, the accuser blaspheming the Father in heaven. They accused him of casting out demons because he was the devil himself. Wisdom. That's 844 years I have. But what's this one? Find that one for me. Not John, the first. All right. Satan makes educations. He wants to tear you down. He'll try any way he can to destroy you. He's a roaring lion. He looks to do what? Kill, steal, and destroy. Yeah. Yeah. He'll use other people to do that. Push them to accuse you. It's common for them. But as the church, we need to follow these principles. Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 15. One witness is not enough to convince anyone accused of a crime or events they may have committed. A matter must be established by the testimony of two and three witnesses. When someone comes to me and accuses someone, I need two or three witnesses. That's very important. You must have two or three witnesses. Credible. Mm -hmm. That's that. Matthew chapter 18, verse 15 to 16. If your brother or sister sin, go away and point out their fault. It's just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others with you so every matter may be established with testimony of two or three witnesses. Yeah, we have that witness. We can back up with witnesses, right? It's very important to have witnesses to back up your, your statement. Hopefully it works better now. Techno problems. As a weapon, Satan uses against me. All right. Now, this is one thing. We have people that accuse us of. We need witnesses. But Satan has a secret weapon against you. 
that we need as a used people. Satan will accuse you. Okay, who, who will you use to accuse you? Yourself. Yeah. That's when a Satan seek a weapon. Yeah. Victory only comes when you reject Satan's accusations. Mm-hmm. Satan will tell things in your mind that you're no good, you're a failure, you messed up, you can't do this. Satan will use yourself to accuse yourself. Yeah. I read this story about a wonderful worship leader. He was a loving husband, affectionate father. He was funny, he was smart, he was passionate about his faith. He was committed to the church. People would look at him and say, wow, a model Christian. He would look at him, wow, follows Christ, strong with the Lord. They were impressed with him. I like to have him on my worship team, you know, come on, that feeling, you know. But underneath, he had a lot of pain. He struggled with depression. He condemned himself because he thought Christian was supposed to be happy all the time. The darkness inside him was heavy. He felt tormented inside because he had depression. Satan would accuse him, oh, you have depression. You're not a good Christian. In self in his mind, I'm not a good Christian because I'm struggling inside. I have depression. Satan would use yourself against yourself. That's how he pulls you down. It's not unique. Many Christians feel that way too. I made a mistake. I'm no good. God hates me now. I think about that. That's Satan's secret weapon against you. We face those things every day. These are what Satan says against you. You have weakness. The devil is always reminding you that you are weak. The devil tries to remind you that you look ugly. You have no skills. You struggle with sin. You're weak. Yeah, but guess what? God uses many people in the Bible who are weak. Moses, Abraham, David, they were weak. Moses was known to have a stutter. I can't talk to the Pharaoh. Uh, I'll just send you Aaron to help you. Yeah. David look weak. When you read the story about Nathan, when he went up to him and said, Who is the next king? This guy looks great. He's all big and strong. He's handsome. Yeah. Nope. No. Who's left? Oh, that scrawny kid over there, the skinny kid with the red hair right there, take care of the sheep. That guy? Yeah. People look, oh, he looks weak. David could have looked at himself, oh, I'm taking care of the sheep while the other brothers are doing the major things. David could have felt that way, I'm worthless. No, he felt strong. He praised God. Read the Psalms. His heart was strong. Satan can say, hey, you're a weak little shepherd. You have no way of defeating the giant. Ah, oh, no. But David's heart was like, I could do all things through God. Satan tries to do the same thing. You're weak, you can't do it. I can't, I can't, I can't. Mm-hmm. 
2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 to 10. For because of these surprisingly great revelations, therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded to the Lord to take it away. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast more gladly about my weakness. So Christ's power will rest on me. That's why Christ's sake I delight in weakness, in insults, in hardship, in persecution, in difficulty. For when I am weak, I am strong. Yeah. Christ's power is made strong. When you admit to God, I am weak, I need you, and I pin on your power, and I can fight back. You have to remember that we need Christ. He covers me. In my weakness, in my struggle, I go to God, and I'm made strong in Him. He cleansed me from my sins. In my weakness, I couldn't overcome. So I turn to God. In his strength, he overcomes my sin. He washes me white as snow. I'm strong in him. In him, he makes you strong. I don't know what's going on. That's the first thing. If you hear him say you're weak, what do you say? No, I'm strong in Christ. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Don't forget that. Satan. You struggle with sin. We all struggle. We, go, we get tempted every day, right? Some of us flee. Some of us struggle constantly. Some people are addicted to many things. Alcohol, drugs, porn. They're addicted to it. They fight. They fight. They feel bad they can't overcome. Some people feel bad they're just tempted. They say, ooh, you're tempted. You're not a good Christian. Jesus was in the wilderness. He was tempted, but he resisted. Hmm. Satan says, oh, you sin. You have no hope. You don't have no hope. You might as well give up. Turn your back against God. Satan wants you to turn your back against God. He doesn't want you to continue trying. He wants you to stop. He wants you to feel hopeless. He wants you lost. Instead, what's the secret? What do you do? Fight back. Continue fighting. Don't give up. When you fall, what do you do? Get back up. And also, you have a brother, sister in Christ that you trust. They can help you get back up. Help. And pick up. When you fall, don't just stay on the ground. No, don't. Get back up. Yeah. Don't give up. Depend. Meditate on him. Don't focus on the sins. Focus on him. Create a new distraction. Who's the best distraction? Him. God. Let the spirit work through you. Don't give up. Continue. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. No temptation has overcome you. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you're tempted, you'll always provide a way to get out. 
Satan will tell you, ah, you're stuck. There's no way out. Satan will fool you. What do you do? Yes, there's a way out. Run, flee from it, and stay away from that situation. If you're struggling, that's a positive thing. How is that a positive thing? Because you're fighting against it. Because if you stop struggling against it and accept it, you're losing. But when you're fighting, you're struggling, <clears throat> it's a good thing. Because you want to break free from your sin. <laughs> I'm addicted to drinking. I'm just going to continue drinking. No. Struggling. No, no, no. Resist. Run away. Avoid that place. Avoid what causes you temptation. Fight, fight, fight. Until you break through. The AA, Alcohol Anonymous, it's not a one-step thing. It's a 12-step thing. Why? Step, step, struggling, struggling, step, step. And they fell in the second step, they go back, fine. They continue going, going, going. 12 steps. I have a few friends on Facebook who's been sober for a long time. And they celebrate, two years sober. Yes, I'm excited. He's fighting. Continue. Ten years sober. Good. They didn't give up. He kept on struggling, struggling, struggling. Endure. That's why the most important thing is to endure. Continue. Satan doesn't want you to endure. He just wants you to lay flat on the ground and give up. Continue fighting. Resist temptation. Yes, we should continue struggling. Continue, continue until you overcome with him. Apostle Paul, you know about him, right? Pretty awesome apostle. He traveled all over Asia and everything. He went through persecution. He suffered shipwrecks. Yeah. He'd been beaten to death several times. He was actually beaten to death one time. But someone prayed over him, brought him back alive. I'd be like, come on, man, I was almost in heaven. Why'd you bring me back alive? But God had another plan for him. He was an awesome apostle. But in Romans chapter 7, he admitted, I don't understand what I do. For what I want to do, what I don't do. But I hate what I do. He struggled too. The world's greatest apostle, he struggled as well. Read chapter 7. Yeah. But the point thing is, he hated what he did. He struggled. He fought. He didn't give up. He talks about, I run the race. I run the race. Continue, continue, until he wins the prize. He kept on running. We had to continue running. We might struggle breathing. <laughs> continue. We continue going. Continue, don't give up. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Read that one. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. I have run the race. Fight the good fight. Don't give up. Continue. Stay tuned with you. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Continue going. Don't give up. Satan will accuse you. Try to use yourself against yourself. Satan will try to tell you, oh, your past disqualifies you. Yeah, Satan has tried to use my past to disqualify me. I look back and says, wow, I've been pointed at several times. My past is forgiven. 
Satan reminds me. He tries to remind me. Do you remember what you did a long time ago? 20 years ago, 15 years ago. Do you remember the day you tried to kill yourself? Do you remember what you did? I remember, yes. But I know I'm forgiven because of him, his grace and love. He died for that. He died for you too. There's a story about a man who went to church for 30 years. He felt inferior. He felt like he couldn't do nothing. He had an affair on his wife 30 years ago. His wife forgave him. He confessed. He said he was sorry. But he carried it for 30 years to kill Because he couldn't, you know, because Satan was always reminding him, reminding him, reminding him, oh, you had a fear on your wife. Your wife's angry at you. But even his wife really forgave him. The church forgave him, but he couldn't forgive himself. Mm -hmm. He carried that. He didn't serve in ministry because of that. He just went to church. Praise God. But he still felt guilty. He went home for 30 years. Satan would do that. Remind, hey, remember? Remember what you did? You have to remember, God forgives you. He throws it out. Nothing can separate you from God's love. Not divorce. Not abortion. Not sexual sin. Not lying. Nothing can separate you from God's love. God, I'm sorry I did this. I'm sorry for my sexual sin. I'm sorry for my divorce. I'm sorry for my abortion. What's God going to say? I love you, my child. Satan's going to say, ah, you sinned against God. He can't forgive you. That's a lie. God can't forgive you. Mm -hmm. Your regrets. You can remember them. Don't, don't let it follow you. I made my mistakes. I won't do it again. Move on. Worship the Lord. Serve him. Whatever he's called me for. Titus chapter 2, verse 14 who gave himself to redeem us from all wickedness and purify for himself the people that are his own. He can do what's good. Jesus gave up his life for all wickedness, all sin. That's why he died for you. We go to God. Lord, will you forgive me for this? Yes. This? Yes. Even this? Yes. And this? Yes. Yeah, he will. If you want to ask him this, you could give him a whole list. He'll tell you yes, yes, yes. He'll be patient. I forgive you, yes, yes. Like a little kid, you forgive me for this, and this, and this, and this. God says, yes, I forgive you for all wickedness. That's his love. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 12. For I will forgive their weakness and will remember their sin no more. Yeah. He will not remember your sins. That's cool. You may remember yourself, but he forgets, throws it away. He shreds them. They should try to accuse you. God doesn't forgive you because of that sin. You feel guilty and you're obsessed with it. It moves your life. He's forgiven you. Another thing Satan said, you are on God's bad side all the time. There are some believers that believe they have to do good to keep God happy. I have to work, work, work for my salvation. I don't want to mad at me. 
I have to pray every morning, every night, read my Bible. If I don't, the next day I feel guilty. I sin against God. I messed up. My salvation is at risk. You have to understand that God the Father loves you so much. He wants you to grow. He wants you to experience his grace. His grace, he loves you so much. He loves you because you are his child. He is slow, very slow to anger. I experience his grace and love. It's very slow to anger. The only time he rebukes you because he wants to change you. He wants you to turn right with him. It's mercy and grace. How do you know that he, he loves us? First John chapter 4, verse 9. It's how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son that may live through him. We were all sinners before Jesus Christ. The whole world before Jesus came. Jesus died on the cross knowing in the future that we would be sinners. And he still died for us. If God was so angry, he wouldn't send Jesus Christ. You could read John 3, 16 to Romans chapter 5, verse 8 through 11. But God demonstrates his own love for us. While we're still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if we were God's enemy, we recognized through him, through the death of his son, a much more have been recognized. Shall we be saved through his life? Not only this, but we can boast through God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have received revelation through. Mm -hmm. He died for us to forgive our sins, to wash us white as snow. Mm -hmm. His love for us. Mm -hmm. Satan says, oh, God's angry with you. He tries to, and that makes you like trying to avoid God. You try to hide from God. Satan wants you to hide from God because he knows you can't grow but you don't go to God. He doesn't want you to grow. And last one. You have committed the unpardonable sin. I remember when I was young, I read that. There's a sin that he can't forgive. Did I do that? I was terrified, to be honest. Yeah. I was thinking, have I done it? Like reading, trying to figure out what it is. I was worried about it. Did I mess up? I'm not going to go to heaven? Yeah. Satan uses that first. Let's read it. Matthew chapter 12, verse 31 to 32. So I tell you, every kind of sin and slander can be forgiven, but blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or the age to come. Okay. Satan throws it at me. I was worried. I'm not saved anymore. Yeah, I was thinking, what's the point of going to church? What's the point of going to God? What's the point if I messed up that? But I realized this is when you completely reject God, when you reject the Holy Spirit, and you die without him, when you reject him. Mm. Now, if you're feeling guilty... If you have a desire of becoming a better Christian, a better follower, you want to grow in him, you haven't done it. You want to grow in him. Yeah. Satan just wants to shut you down by using him. If you're motivated to grow, go in the church to grow with him, to learn 
ये कह You said things that Satan uses to accuse you in your mind. God uses all kinds of people despite all their faults. Noah got drunk. Abraham was old. Isaac was a daydreamer. Jacob lied. Leah was ugly. Joseph was abused. Moses was a murderer and couldn't talk. Gideon was afraid. Samson had long hair. He was also afraid too. Rahab was a prostitute. Jeremiah and Timothy. Jeremiah and Timothy. They were young. David was a murderer and adulterer. Elijah was suicidal. I say I preach naked. Jonah ran from God. Naomi was a widow. Job went bankrupt. John the Baptist ate bugs. I know there's some silly things. Peter denied Christ. Disciples fell asleep while praying. Yeah, so much more. Lazarus was dead. But God used them. God uses everyone who goes to him. Satan accused these people, but God still used them. Because they put aside Satan. God, what do you want? They to try to use people to accuse you. They'll try to use yourself against yourself. He will accuse, 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 accuse. But you have to remember, through Christ you are justified. You're made right with him. You are content of all your sins of the past, the present, and the future. It's a once-for-all verdict. All guilt has been removed. Jesus took your place. He paid off the price, the damn you have. Jesus paid it off. Second, Corinthians chapter 5, verse 2. God, who made him no sin for us, so that in we may become righteous of God. Jesus credit the righteousness for you. The dead, he paid it off. His perfect holiness took your place. Everything that Satan accuses you of, Jesus paid it off. Jesus took it, washed it away. He goes to the Father. I took this person's place. He took your place. Mm -hmm. If you had a report card that says M, you fell, you messed up, you're weak, you've been accused, Jesus takes it, replaces it. What's his report card? A plus. Perfect track record for you. Romans chapter 5, verse 1 through 2. Therefore, since we justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we gain access through faith in his grace, which we stand, and we boast in the hope and glory of God. Jesus took your place on the cross. That was supposed to be for you and me. You and me deserve that. But Jesus went up there and died on the cross. Even for the thief on the side who asked him to forgive him, with his last dying breath, 
and coming with me. You will be in paradise with me. Because the thief was accused. He was being punished already. But Jesus says, I take your accusation. I save you. I died for your sins as well. Because he asked. When Satan accuses you, what do you do? You say no, and what? Open the Bible. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Therefore, there's no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ. Guess what? I'm in Jesus Christ. Satan's like, ah. I have no condemnation because I am in Jesus Christ. That's your ammo to you. Bye-bye. Be gone. I'm not condemned. All the things you accuse me of, he paid it off. Jesus took your punishment. His blood is more powerful than anything that Satan accused you of. Nothing goes above. Jesus said, you are qualified. Your past is irrelevant. God's love is given to you. When the Father looks at you, he loves you, he holds you. He doesn't look at your past. He sees you in a robe of righteousness. Because that's what Jesus did. He gave you a robe of righteousness. Shiny, white as snow. That's what it is. The last verse. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 through 9. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent, praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you learned or received or heard from me, or seen in me, put in practice, and God's peace will be with you. Mm -hmm. don't let Satan tear you down you either let it tear you down or make you stronger don't forget when you're accused what do you say I have Jesus Christ in me I am not condemned anymore I am made right with God how do I know the Bible tells me so I am made strong through Jesus Christ. I'm not accused anymore. I am free. I got the innocent verdict. Verdict. Yeah, I'm not guilty. When I face God, I'm not going to get guilt. I'm going to get well done. I'm innocent through Jesus Christ. So remember that. Don't forget. I'm going to close prayer right now. Lord, we thank you for your son on the cross who died for me to wash my sins away. Because Satan accusing me all the time that I'm weak, I'm a sinner, I messed up. Yes, I'm guilty. But because of you, you died on the cross. I receive your gift that washes my sins away. The guiltiness is gone. My past is gone. And I move on with the robe of righteousness. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you. Help us to continue to be strong. Help us to remember that we're not condemned anymore. Through your son, we stand strong to sell Satan. No, I'm not guilty. I'm made right with God. Jesus Christ's blood washes me white as snow. I thank you for that, Lord. 
that you're willing to give me that gift. Even though I didn't deserve it, you gave it to me and everyone here as we receive it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Worship team. Today is the first Sunday of the month. The communion today. Ushers, come on up. We're passing. You don't have to be a member of the church to do this. The point thing is you must be right with God.